Hello everybody, welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and transfer news. And, ah, uh, well, the, you can notice there's an absence from here, but I do have a Fabrizio Romano update via email that I'll be reading out to you because ultimately Fabrizio was meant to be on the show at half past two and uh, had to have a late fitness test because of a sore throat, which he has actually failed. So we'll hopefully get Romano on tomorrow. But what I did get is an update from him on email via, via um, uh, in relation to Varan, because there are some big updates coming out from Sky Sports and the Manchester Evening News, which we believe are not actually entirely accurate. So an uh, interesting update from Romano to bring you. Why has he got a sore throat? Well, it was going to be a difficult day for me anyway, as an Englishman interviewing an Italian. Uh, obviously, Fabrizio, uh, quite rightly, fair play, is celebrating a very, very big win for Italy. And um, yeah, has uh, has uh, has not uh, has failed a fitness test. But what he has told me is that Varane personal terms. Let me read this right. Um, Varane personal terms are not a problem. They're always in contact with his agents. Also for other players, they're waiting for Real Madrid's position about the price tag. Real Madrid will try to convince Varane, but it's going to be really difficult. So that is the update on where we're at. And it's exactly what I said this morning when we got news coming in from the Manchester Evening News that United are progressing with personal terms. We also got this update this afternoon from Sky Sports saying Manchester United continue talks over at Varane. Manchester United continue talks with the representatives Varane over personal terms. United have been permission to speak to Varane's camp. If terms can be agreed, United are expected to open talks with Real Madrid over a fee. It is thought that Varane would be open to move if an agreement can be reached. Uh, United are cautious because of Ramos in 2015. PSG are also in talks with Varane's representatives. That's an update from Sky on actually July the 12th, an hour ago. I had to double check that. That's like that's an update from June. PSG in for Varane? What, what, what are they? Who's their source? Bloody hell, who is their source? Tomato ketchup or Mr. HP sauce? I mean, that is dreadful. That is a dreadful update. That is, I mean, look, unless the, unless the world has spun and Sky have found a really good source on this, that is old news. That is slow sports news, I'm afraid. PSG are in talks with Varane. They're not. They're not. Unless the world is spun completely and they, they know something we don't know, that is not the case. PSG are not in for Varane. Also, we're not discussing personal terms and then going to speak to Madrid. That's not That's not been the story and that's not been the story for a very long time. The story is I've always understood it is what we've just had from Romano. And we're going to do a bit of a Q&A because we did thought we were going to get Romano on today, but we haven't. So we'll do a bit of a Q&A. But I think that what we what we basically... Uh, Jim White would not have that as an update. Jim White, Sky Sports News. Jim White, Slow Sports News. What's that? Get in the bin with PSG and Varane. That's a joke. Absolute disgrace. Scooby-Doo. But um, I think that with, with, um, with what I've been told, and I've been inconsistent about this on the show... Personal terms with Varane are basically, they can never officially be agreed because you can't officially agree personal terms until you've officially agreed to deal with Varane, uh, with, with Madrid. But what United do and what a lot of clubs do is they speak to the player and the agent and then they uh, agree what would be agreeable and whether they want to come to the club and then you deal with Madrid. And that's what United have done. And I, let me just read back what Fabrizio said to me. He said, Varane, personal terms, not a problem. And what that means is it's not a problem. You're not working. We're not negotiating. It's not a problem. The conversation between Varane's reps and United's reps is fine. They're always in contact with his agents like they are for other players, which we'll talk about in a minute. They're waiting for Real Madrid's position about what price they want. And Real are still trying to convince Varane to stay. That's the situation. And it's the same situation we spoke about yesterday morning. This is a big week because Varane is due back training next week. And Real Madrid are wanting to understand if they can keep him at the club before they negotiate with Manchester United. As I said this morning, Real Madrid are waiting for Varane to say, no, I want to go, which he hasn't officially done yet. He's expected to do that. Spanish reports expect him to do that. There is expectation from United side that that will happen. But this talk about personal terms is off. This talk about PSG is off. The, the reality with this deal at the moment is there's no issue between Manchester United and Varane. There is a, an, a, there is a, there, there's no issue with personal terms. There is basically an agreement in principle that, that that can happen if Madrid will sell. And that's where we're at with it. 
with Varane. So I don't know what Sky are talking about and I don't know what Manchester Evening News are talking about. Maybe their sources are better or maybe they're worse, but that's from Fabrizio Romano. Personal terms are not a problem. They're always in contact with Varane's agents and they're waiting for Real Madrid to sort out the fee. But Real Madrid is still trying to convince Varane to stay, which they can't do. That's the stall on this deal at the moment. That is where we're at. So there you go. But I think the interesting thing is um, um, people are asking about a medical for Sancho. Well, I, ha I haven't got Fabrizio on the show, as you can see. That was literally on an email when he was not able to come on. We're, we're going to try and get it done tomorrow now. Um, but... Fabrizio has a sore throat from celebrating for Italy. The world just gets worse. You know, I want to, I want to move over. I want to move over. I want to move on from England versus Italy. We've got Fabrizio on this afternoon. We're going to talk everything about Manchester United. I can't come on. I've got a sore throat from celebrating. Yeah, we're still we're still stuck on that Italy win. Then it's like losing twice. It's like losing twice. Bantered. But at least he did give us the update on Varane, which I think is very important today because I don't want us to get. I don't want us to get steered off. I don't want to steer away from the story here. It feels like. You know, if we hadn't had that update from uh, uh, Fabrizio, which I'm really grateful for, we'd be st stuck here now going, oh, a PSG in the race. Oh, are we trying to sort out personal terms? No, and no, we're not. So stay on target. Stay on target with what's going on, definitely. And I thought the other thing that was interesting about what Fabrizio said was that uh, Manchester United are in contact with his agents, also for other players. That, to me, suggests Camavinga. Um, that's a very interesting line that he says, no problems with personal terms and Varane. Uh, Manchester United are constantly in contact with the agents of Varane and other players. And I think this is the same with Camavinga. We haven't got a Camavinga. I'd hazard, I'd, I'd hazard a very calculated guess here that Varane and his agent are already happy with the wages and the agent fees that United have offered. And, you know, I'd be willing to bet, bet good money on that. I would hazard a guess that we have uh, agreed with Camavinga and his agents a good a fee that they're happy with and wages that they're happy with. It's now about whether you can agree the fee with Real Madrid and Rennes and whether another club comes in and offers the same and, and Camavinga wants to go there or Varane wants to go there. I don't think anyone else is in for Varane, so I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about him staying at Madrid. With Camavinga, I think he might, I think he fancies United, but he might fancy somebody else a little bit more. And I think that is where we are with this. Um, and look, you know what? I don't know whether anybody watches Love Island. I certainly don't. But the way a transfer works is like this. In Love Island, right, you get five girls, you get five boys. I've never watched it. I'm just pretending. You've got five girls, you've got five boys, and they couple up, right? And some people are very happy in, happy in their couples, but some of them, when they're by the, beat, by, the, by, the, by the swimming pool, are thinking, well, I quite like that girl or boy. So... But what they'll do is they don't want to ruin their relationship with that, with who they're with. So what they'll do is on the sly, they'll go and have a chat with Bob, who's with Carol. And they'll go, Bob, I quite fancy you. Do you like me? Yeah, I'm not happy with Carol. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not happy with uh, with Jim either. Let's uh, let's party. All right. OK. And then they'll go and speak to their current partners and say, I'm not happy. Me and Bob want to be together. And then the current club goes, well, the current person goes. Mm. And it's the same as what's happening here. Baran and Manchester United have a chat. You know, Varane's with Madrid. Man United are with, I don't know who else, but they're, they're single, looking to mingle. Man United go, hey, hey, Varane, we, I quite fancy you. You know what? I quite like you. I thought you were with Madrid. I thought you were happily married. Well, it's been, a, we've had a good time, you know, you know, a good few holidays and a good few Christmases, but I'm, I'm ready for a new challenge now. I quite fancy it. Okay. You've got to go and tell Madrid though, and I'll be, I'll be waiting to pick you up. That's what's got to happen here. There's no point United going, oh, I quite fancy Varane. I'm going to go and speak to his wife first, Madrid, and say, I fancy your husband. Can I have him? Tsh, around the face. And Varane goes, how bloody dare you? I would never leave Madrid. You've got to tap him up. You've got to flirt with him and make him interested first. And it makes me laugh how, how certain people and certain outlets still think that the way a transfer is done is that United knock on the door of Madrid and go, we really would like Varane. You've got to speak to Varane before you speak to Madrid. You've got to find out whether he's interested, you know, whether he's whether he fancies it. You've got to do that. You've got to do that. And that's the way United work. And that's the way football works. And that's the way Chelsea work. And that's the way Man City work. You've got to show your thing to your, the player you want. And they've got to be interested in your thing before you can speak to the club. That's how it works. Um, do you think I'll back up? So let's get into a bit of a Q&A. Um, the... Um, Get your questions in. So, yeah, we were meant to have Romano on to show today. Apologies uh, in relation to that. And Fabrizio did apologise as well. He doesn't need to. Italy have won. You've got every right to have a sore throat and, and, a, and a day off. 
he works bloody hard. And I tell you what, I'd have been having a day off. It'd have been the other way around. Um, but he did give us that update on Varane. Personal, so summary before we move on. Sky Sports, Manchester Evening News, both saying that United are working on personal terms with Varane before they speak to Madrid. It's not what I've heard. It's not what a few people have heard. And uh, Romano has said to me today that that is not the case. Uh, Manchester United have got no problems with personal terms with Varane. They're waiting on Madrid for a price, but Madrid are still trying to get Varane to change his mind. So that's where we're at. We're waiting on Madrid, who are waiting on Varane. Varane's basically happy to come to United, but needs to tell Madrid. You know, he's got, he's got we need we need one of these. Oh, I'm not sponsored by Manscaped, but he needs to, he needs to, Show some balls and say, Madrid, I'm leaving you. I'm leaving you, you cow. And then we can step in and drive him to Manchester or fly him or however we're going to do it. So that's where we're at with that. Uh, did it come home, says Malcolm? Um, depends depends what nationality you are. If you're Italy, <laughs> it, it came Rome. I'll tell you what I loved about the Italians, though, when they were singing, um, it's coming Rome. They, 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 they clearly don't know this song. Like the, the tune is, it's coming home, it's coming home football's coming home and even Jorginho who lives in, Eng in England and plays for Chelsea are going it's coming Rome it's coming Rome it's coming Rome like they don't even know the tune but the banter's elite and I said this before um this is why we love the game of football because it should always be rivals not enemies it should always be element of banter you can be frustrated but you should never be abusive you can be upset but you should never be violent and look I wanted England to win. I'm sure a lot of people did. I'm sure a lot of people wanted us to lose. But I can't I can't knock Italy for rubbing it in our faces. God, I would have done the same. That's why I love football. When you win, you sing. And when you lose, you take your medicine. Live by the sword, die by the sword. That's the way it should be in football. So I, I take nothing away from Italy. Um, and they've got every right to provide us with some banter. Um, do, 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 do. What's this? You said you'd do a ranking for Prem Team double pivots. What can we? When can we expect that? I don't remember saying that, Jeff. That sounds like an. That sounds like a really bad video idea that about five people would watch. But um, yeah, maybe we could do it next season when we see what everyone's pivot is. Varane would take us another level, but we need to move Pogba on. He's excellent, but not committed. Our fault, but he's got to go and be replaced as Alex Lang. That sounds like more like a statement, Alex. But that's fine. Um, Mark Madrid. Oh, let me just get this one up. Mark, Madrid pay Varane 16 million gross for Varane to get 8 million after taxes because Spain tax law, says Cheyenne. I'm not aware of that, but that's a lot of money. Are they, do, they, do they play more tax than us then? Is that what they do? Uh, Conor McGee says, when do you think uh, Sancho will have his medical? I think that'll be decided by uh, Sancho. I think we'll find out. Um, I mean, look, it's it's been a couple of weeks now since we signed Sancho. So that one will um, obviously, you know, sort of, it's like a, a whole new news story again, isn't it? But we already know we've got Sancho. I mean, I've done a video on how he fits in. So um, I, I'm sure, for, I'm, uh, funnily enough, I think Fabrizio said last week that United have got something very big planned for Sancho, um, which is fine. You know, it's absolutely fine. Um, I'm not going to knock United having something big planned, but rather than a big piano or orchestra or, you know, something with Stormzy or something like that. I'd much rather we announced Varane and Camavinga. You know, uh, one thing England losing last night has done is galvanised my hope that United are going to make some progression this season. I mean, I just don't like the whole Ollie is like Southgate thing because we've seen what happens with Southgate. He can take you so far and then bottle it. And, you know, some people think that's the same with, uh, uh, with Ollie. Uh, we seem to have a good relationship with Stella Sports. We're constantly linked to their players. Aaron Barry was one as well, says Flash. Um, is that is Varane with Stella Sports then? I know I know uh, Kamavinga is, but uh, yes, um, definitely. All hopes move on to United now, says A. I totally agree with that. Uh, would you sell Bay if uh, Varane signs? Well, let me just give you some updates as well, because it's not all about uh, Varane today. Let's have a quick chat about Kamavinga. Um, the situation with Kamavinga is... I feel that that one question that gets asked a lot at the moment is if 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 you've got Pogba, Varane, and you can add other players into this, but if you've got Pogba, Varane, and Camavinga, how quick will those which which of those deals is going to get resolved quick and quickest? And of course, Varane gets resolved by signing for United or or staying at Real Madrid. Camavinga gets resolved by staying at Rennes, coming to United, going to Chelsea, going to PSG, and Pat Pogba gets resolved by staying at United, signing a new contract, or leaving or running his contract down. 
how quick we're going to get decisions with those is uh, is the interesting thing. Um, I would say that Varane is the quickest one because I think that that will happen the quickest one way or another. I think Pogba is going to be the longest one, and I think that will still be going on in August. And I think Camavinga could happen really quickly. But my feeling with Camavinga from discussions and also just reading and everything as well, I feel that Camavinga to United could happen like that. It's a £30 million deal. We could just do it like that. If Camavinga was desperate for United and United were desperate for Camavinga, I don't see why this deal couldn't be done tomorrow because it's he's a bargain. I, re- I think the reason it's going to take a lot longer is I think he wants to go to PSG and he's waiting to see if PSG want him. And I think United want somebody else and they're waiting to see if that can happen as well. So I, I think that's what's happening with that. Mark, I thought England were going to win because Premier League is faster than Serie A. I love you, but that was a lazy piece of analysis. Um, no, I stand by it, mate, actually. Um I explained this yesterday. In fact, it's on my it's on my video from yesterday. Um, so if you want uh, if you want to chat about England, it's on my video from yesterday. But um, you know, we're all geniuses in hindsight, aren't we? But did Italy win the game in ninety minutes? No. Did England dominate in the first forty five minutes because the tempo was good? Yes. Did Southgate decide to stick back at half time? Yes. Did Italy's tempo go up? Yes. So football's never cut and dry, and 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 you can't sit there and say my analysis was wrong. England dominated the game in the first 45 minutes. Their their tempo was perfect. They dominated the midfield. Their defence was dominant. And we were a threat. At half-time, Southgate decided to try and park the bus and win 1-0. Biggest mistake he'll ever make. And then Italy took control of the game and England just couldn't get couldn't get back. So I don't think anything, I don't think anything I said was wrong. And I think if you're if you think differently, you'll probably justify yourselves. But I certainly don't concede that I was wrong. I think yesterday was about Southgate, and that's why that's why we lost. Simple as that. But I don't really want to talk about England on here. It's not about that. Will Marcus and Jaden recover from this? And how long will Marcus be out after his surgery? Says Kieran Wood. If he has his surgery, Kieran, we don't know. Uh, so that's an if. And they will both recover from this because they're both strong-minded individuals. Mihail says, Mark, do you think Varane could also take Aaron Wambasaka to the next level? Look at how Luke Shaw's best period in the shirt has been next to Maguire, a centre-back who gives him confidence and authority to drive, says Mihail. Yeah, but Luke Shaw won player of the year when Maguire wasn't here. So that's, again, this is a myth. I've, 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 been, I've had people messaging me privately and all sorts saying that, you know, Luke Shaw's only been good this year. No, it's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Like Luke Shaw has been getting better and better a left back for a long time. The problem is cer- certain people want to say that he's overweight and he's only come good now. If you don't want to open your eyes up to the fact that Luke Shaw, Luke Shaw hasn't just suddenly realised that he can run backwards and forwards quickly and put a cross into the box and defend immaculately and win the ball and be brilliant at 50-50s and great at give and goes. He's had these attributes. He's just got better and better. Uh, Will Mark, yeah, read that one. Um Varane, if we get Varane and Camavinga, Pogba stays. This is a good transfer window. We still don't have that specialist CDM that we all agree we need, says Julian S. Um, I think that if we can keep Pogba on a new contract, because that's what I count as keeping Pogba, get Camavinga and Varane on top of Sancho, that's about as good as you could hope for. I think that would be a very good transfer window. I'd, in fact, I'd, I'd give it a 9 out of 10, because you keep Pogba, and I'm talking new contract here. And you get Sancho, you get Varane, you get Camavinga. I think I think you're actually I think would be absolutely fine. I know Camavinga's great potential, but Rice last night was why we've got to go all out for him. Was the best player last night. We need him by far, says Sean Turner. And yet other people were saying that that Rice was shit last night, Sean. And I think I think Declan Rice is a divider. Um, I, I'm I'm a fan of Declan Rice. Uh, please smash a like on the video, by the way, if you're watching and get your questions in. Um, we will hopefully have Romano on tomorrow. He's lost his voice because of his celebrations for Italy, but he did give us that update on Varane, which is totally different to what Sky is saying. Sky is saying that PSG are interested. I mean, I don't know where where, where they're getting this news from. Are Sky going to announce that Italy won the Euros in August or something? I, I don't know what they're talking about with PSG. And personal terms are not an issue. So I don't know why they're saying that we're negotiating on personal terms as well. In your opinion of your sources, what would be the reasons for Varane staying at Madrid or what would it take for him to leave Madrid? It says Fame. Do you want the honest answer? I think Varane wants to leave Madrid because the money. I think a lot of players are driven by money. I think he knows it's his last big contract. And I think he's won everything at Madrid. And I think, you know, but ultimately, I think if Madrid offered him the same money as United or more money than United, he would stay. So I think it comes down to a big contract. Um, And look, the thing about Varane that makes me worried more than anything is what if he does what Pogba could do? What if he says, you know what? 
I'm just going to run the last year down. I'm happy in Madrid. I like Madrid. And in a year's time, I'll, I'll be a very rich man. What if he decides to do that? Uh, hi, Mark. What would you regard as a successful season uh, in the upcoming season, says Will Scott? Well, that's one of the big things I want to touch on on the eight o'clock show tonight. But um, I think, you know, as a, as, a, as a short answer, I think we've got a challenge for a title. And if you challenge for a title properly, that means you can win a title. A title challenge for me is not being top of the league in January. A title challenge for me is not finishing second, but never being anywhere near them since January. I think for me, a title challenge is being in a title race in April. That's what I want to see from United. And then if you're in a title challenge, you've got a chance of winning in it. So that's for me. United have got to be in a title race in April this year. Who said Rice was bad last night? Stevie Wonder, says Steve Sean Turner. I've seen a few people on social media saying it. Uh, do you think Ollie will overplay players again, says Jay Ling's fam? It's one of the things you've got he has to improve on, Jay Ling's fam. It, he definitely does. Um, let's have a look what David says. Hi, Mark. Can you wish my friend Jag happy birthday? He hasn't stopped crying since yesterday's lost. Um, well, there you go. It's on the screen. Happy birthday to Jag. Hope you have a good day. I mean, look, Jag, I've got to be honest with you. I think being a United fan over recent years has taught me about this sort of thing. But um, when United lose in the Europa League final or whatever, and you get Arsenal and Liverpool and other fans trying to banter you, it doesn't, you know, I'm like Batfink. I've got wings of steel. I just close them in. But behind those wings, I'm bloody furious because I'm furious. I don't really care about rivals or banter or anything like that. I've never been that person that reacts to being bantered by rivals. It just doesn't bother me. Um, and I'm not disappointed. I'm, uh, you know, I, I was frustrated. I was frustrated. We bottled it. And I think one of the best things about bottling things is that you need to acknowledge it. The worst thing for me is when people start saying you're unlucky. And I, I bring this back to Manchester United. I'm fed up of talking about England. But um, I, um, I, I just think that when you look at, when you look at um, Manchester United Europa League loss, I never wanted anyone to say we're unlucky. The tactics were poor from Ollie. He didn't make substitutions. We bottled it in penalties. We bottled it in extra time. We bottled it throughout the whole game and we didn't deserve to win. I don't want to wake up that next morning and go, oh, we were so unlucky. We were so close. Let's have a parade for, for, for runners up in the Europa League. Let's not have a parade. Put the bus away. Get back to work. You know, literally get back to work. So you can lose and not be unlucky. You can lose and be losers. And I think England were losers. And I think Manchester United were losers. I'd be focused today on not feeling sorry for yourself. You know, what do they say when you fall off a horse? Get back on a horse, you know, or, or run away and don't get back on a horse. But you've got to get back on the horse. And that's what we need to do. That's what United need to do this year. have to say someone from England hearing about all the disgusting abuse from some England fans against young players who have given everything for their country and taken them so far is sad, says Mark Friedman. Yeah, especially when anybody with a brain knows that the blame lies with the manager. And I don't think the manager should be abused either. He's, he's got limitations. Um, he probably exceeded those expectations. But to blame individual players is, is just naive. Do you think we could sign other players apart from Vran and Kamavinga at the moment, says Jonathan Vaz? Well, I think we're definitely still looking at a right back. Um, and I think, you know, thing about thing about United is when they get obsessed about a player, they don't tend to give in. I've said that. What did I say? What did I say? I've been saying this since last. I can't remember whether it was February or something like that. I was asked about who I thought United would buy in the summer. And I don't think United knew themselves in February who they were going to buy this summer. But I said, if I had to bet on players that we would buy, I said Sancho and Trippier. Well, Sancho's come in. And I still believe that United are a bit obsessed with Trippier. Rightly or wrongly, I think we're obsessed with Trippier and I think we think he's the right player. And remember, Eng United love English players. So Trippier, I think United will go for him. Uh, 50 million for Pogba, 80 million for Rice. Would you take that, says Alex Lang? You know what? Declan Rice won't come to Manchester United. He will go to probably Chelsea, I think. But um, I think Declan Rice would be a really good fit for United. But... I do think that Declan Rice, and I don't know what everyone thinks about this, but I think Declan Rice would be a very similar signing to Harry Maguire. I think he would struggle with the price. Rice will struggle with the price because I think both internally and externally, people would go, ha, 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 you've paid £80 million for Declan Rice. He's not even worth 60 And I think that would be the problem. 
Harry Maguire was never an 80 million pound centre back. Even now, I don't think he's an 80 million centre back, and I think he's performing fantastically well. But that's not Maguire's fault, and it wouldn't be Declan Rice's fault. We just would overpay for him. I think Declan Rice at Manchester United would be a revelation. He's exactly what we need in exactly the position we need it. But um, I just don't think United have got that level of money to buy him. And I don't know whether his desire is to come to us if another club goes in, it'll be Chelsea. Mark, I know I mentioned this before, but could you react to the video from B Monus about the downfall of Manchester United? Interesting from American view, Americans' view, says A Ty. Thank you very much. Um, Mark, do you think Andres Pereira and Jones will stay? Says J Ling's fam. Um I think I think I think I think Jones uh will stay. Um, I, don't, I think Pereira will definitely go on loan. I don't see how Pereira gets into the team. Mark, is it a bad transfer window if Varane Sancho Camavinga comes in and Pogba goes with Delo staying at right back, Lingard and Pereira going and Dave stays? <sighs> God, it's quite a list, Ed Bath. So Varane Sancho Camavinga would be good. Pogba going would be bad. Delo staying, I wouldn't have a problem with. Lingard and Pereira going would be good. David De Gea staying, well, I don't know whether that would be good or bad if he sat on the bench. Um, that could be quite that's that's quite a that's a quite a realistic transfer window if things go the way they should do. You know, Lingard and Pereira should go. Delay Delo probably should be given a go at the right back because then we don't have to buy anybody. Varane and Kamavinga are both achievable, and obviously I think we all think Pogba will go. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility. How would I rank that transfer window? Well, look, I think losing Pogba and bringing an 18-year-old in doesn't necessarily solve our problems. So I would probably give that a seven and a half out of ten. Rice, Fred, and Bruno might work. Can only dream, says Alex Lang. Yeah, well, Bruno ain't going to go anywhere. Uh, Fred's not going anywhere, is he? So, you know, interested to see what happens with that. Uh, would you take Kembempe or Verratti swap for Pogba, says Brunster? Well, we don't need Kimbe we don't need uh, Kimbempe because uh, we don't need him if we get Varane. Uh, Verratti would be very welcome at Manchester United, but remember, Verratti isn't a holding midfielder. He can play there, but look at where Jorginho was playing. So, um, Mohamed says Kamavinga isn't a DM. Mate, I'm not even getting into that debate. How can you tell me an 18-year-old is not a centre defensive midfielder when, one, he's played there before, and two, he's only 18, and three, his best attribute is tenacity and, and tackling? He can definitely be a centre defensive midfielder. He can also be a number eight, but you can't sit there and say he's, he's not a DM. It's like the same Pratt who said at the start of the season that Donny is only a number 10 and that's all he ever will be. It's, it's a nonsense. It's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. We will start the season with Sancho as our only new signing and have another poor start. Too many consistent, inconsistent players at the club. I don't think that will happen, John. I understand your uh, scepticism and, uh, you know, you've got every right to be cynical about United. But I don't think that will happen. Um, hi, Mark. Is the Lorenzo story true? And it's sad to see how Rashford Muriel was damaged. Really makes me sad, says Swap Nil. Yeah, we spoke about this this morning. It is not acceptable. Um, and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I think I think we all know that. It's ridiculous that um, um, that, um, that, that things that happen. It's, it's, it's already started in the chat again. Like, you don't even watch Kamavinga. He's definitely not a CDM. He needs a CDM to play in a double pivot. Fred also tackles a lot and he isn't a CDM. Mate, he's 18 years of age. This is what I'm saying. He's 18. You're telling me at 18 a player cannot be a centre defensive midfielder. Like, you think, well, Mason Greenwood's not a right winger. He's a striker, but he still plays on the bloody right wing, doesn't he? It doesn't, you don't, you're not defined by what you are at 18 is what I'm saying. He has the attributes to be turned into a very good centre defensive midfielder. He's not finished growing. He's good at passing. He's good at tackling and he's tenacious and he's intelligent. He's got everything that, a CDM could be. I don't know whether United are planning on making him be a, being a CDM. I certainly think if we did buy him, he may not be a CDM, but he certainly could be a CDM. I think people just get locked into these mindsets. It's not a CDM. He's not a CDM. He's not a centre. He's not a box-to-box -box player. He's a, he's a number 10. He's not a right winger. He's a left winger. He's not a right back. He's a right centre. But, you know, things can change. People get locked in on football. Football's probably the most adaptive game there is. Like, Apart from a goalkeeper's probably not going to play up front, there's very few things. A centre-back can be a CDM. Kimmich can be a right-back and a CDM. Like, it's not a jump for a midfielder who is good on the ball and is good at tackling and is tenacious and is playing as a midfielder for them to go back 10 yards and be a CDM. If Kimmich can go from CDM to right-back and Fabinho can go from right-back to CDM and centre-back, 
I certainly think an 18-year-old Camavinga could become a very good CDM if he comes to United and if we want to do that with him. Maybe Ollie thinks he wants Camavinga as a replacement for Pogba as a box-to-box -box player, you know? I don't know. Uh, Vera says he loves the new background. It's here by chance and not by design, but actually I quite like it as well. Um, thanks for that. In fact, you can get a shout out for that. There we go. He's versatile. He's waffly verse. He remembers those bird's eye potato, bird's eye potato waffles. They're waffly versatile. Um, let's have a look what else people are saying. United need to utilise the transfer window and stop being Brexit FC, says Jack Lynch. I feel so sorry for the English players being abused. This should not be happening, says Jack Lynch. Um, it's the, it, it, you know what it is? It's the vocal minority, as I said this morning, um, that you can be in a room. You know, I, 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 if you're in a room with 100 people and 99 of those people are 100 people, 100 people are in a room, right? And 100 people are told, be quiet and respect each other. And one person starts shouting and swearing. That room is full of them shouting and swearing. But there's 99 people being quiet and being respectful. And 99% of that room is doing it. But one person is being heard. And I, I feel that this is what happens in this world that we live in now. We want to watch football and we want to digest football and we want to have a conversation about football. And then the next minute, we're not talking about football because of the vocal minority. But they make a lot of noise because everybody else finds it abhorrent and disgusting what they do. So that one, that, that loud noise that they make as a minority actually infects the whole conversation because we're so outraged by it, quite rightly. Um, how many times has it happened with Manchester United where we're watching a United game and Aaron Wambasaka doesn't pick up his man on the back post and then suddenly he's being racially abused? We as football fans lose because we want to say, why is Wambasaka constantly out of position? Is it coaching? Is it because he's not good enough to wear a United shirt? And you do have that conversation, but it's not the same conversation anymore because you the abuse he gets transcends the football conversation. So you automatically don't really feel invested in the football conversation anymore because you're too invested in saying how disgraceful it is that he's being racially abused, that you don't feel like talking about whether he's a good right back or whether it's Ollie's fault or anything like that anymore. And that's the sad thing waking up this morning is that there's a lot of things we could be digesting and talking about, about certain players, but more importantly, England football in general. When actually we're spending all day talking about racist abuse, which is the biggest thing to talk about, and the football conversation disappears. It's horrible on so many levels, and everybody loses out. The good the good people lose out. Hi, Mark. Possibility of Varane and Camavinga, says Gabe. Um, well, I think, you know, that's the question about this transfer window, isn't it? Can Manchester United deliver that? United players can, can't win any trophy under Oli. It's a curse, says uh, Pisco. Well, there are. I mean, what I would say about that, there is a few United players now that just can't win things. Rashford, Shaw, Maguire, they've just got no winner's medals, but they've been, you know, I mean, look, if you're Luke Shaw and you're Marcus Rashford and you're Harry Harry McCain, Harry Maguire, they've been in three, two finals in the last two months, uh, well, three months, two months, really. Um, and they've got two losers medals. That starts to get in your head. They need to win something. And I felt, I mean, look, that, 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 I mean, I felt bad as an English person, but I felt bad for Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire and Marcus Rashford and, and Jaden Sancho now, of course, because he's a United player. Um, because I think if they'd come back from that tournament with winners' medals, there would have been a different mentality around them going into next season. It's something that they're going to be carrying. We need to win something. Even an FA Cup, we just need to win something so we've got a winner's medal because a winner's mentality is what it's all about. So Alex Ferguson said it a few times. To win a title, you've got to be in a title race. You know, it's hard to win a title. Um, and it's getting over that line that then makes it easier in the future. We need to get a few winners in our team. Did our fans forget Owen Hargreaves, Daley Blind, who played fullbacks in CDM and even centre midfield to Shraven? Well, exactly, mate. Exactly. Great point. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, please subscribe, by the way, bottom right hand corner and smash a like. Um, what they don't have uh, one mark. One thing that scares me is zonal marking. That's another thing, yeah, we will probably continue to do. Um, Barry says, I've heard Manchester United, here, this is a good point from Barry, let's bring it in. Barry says that um, Manchester United are closing in on um, the um, the personal, what's it, closing on in on personal terms with Varane, how true is it? It's not true at all, mate. I don't know why Sky and MEN are talking about it. Um, 
as I said, the updates, I felt this was wrong this morning, and it is wrong. I don't know why Sky are talking about um, PSG being interested in Varane as well. doesn't make any sense. Feels like Sky's update is about three weeks old. Um, as I said, Fabrizio was meant to be on the show this afternoon. He's got a sore throat from all he's celebrating from Italy. Hopefully we'll get him on tomorrow. But I did ask him and he did send me an email. He said, Varane, personal terms are not a problem. They're always in contact with his agents. What they're waiting for at the moment is Real Madrid's position about how much they want. But Real Madrid are still trying to convince Varane, which will be very difficult. That's the update. And that's from Fabrizio Romano. So as he said, and as we've said for a while now, personal terms are not a problem. And when he says, look, remember from the Sancho days, when Fabrizio Romano is saying that personal terms are not a problem, what he's saying is that the conversation has taken place between Sancho and United or Varane and United or Camavinga and United. And when he says personal terms are not a problem, what that means is the conversation has taken place between Varane and United and there is agreement about the wages and the agent fees and everything else. That's not a problem. That's what that means. So anybody who's saying today United is still negotiating on personal terms, they're not right. What we're waiting for is Real Madrid to accept that Varane is leaving and then sort the price out with us. And at that, we're not at that point now. Um, and for me, this just feels like we're filling dead air by saying, oh, it's about personal terms. But all it does is confuse fans who maybe don't understand the workings of transfers these days is that you don't speak to Madrid before you speak to Varane. You don't speak to Renz before you speak to Camavinga. You don't speak to Dortmund before you speak to Sancho. Because, again, it's like if you want to marry somebody, you don't go and sp we're not living in the 1800s. You don't go and knock on the door and say, please, sir, can I marry your daughter or your son? You, you actually have a conversation with the daughter or son and find out whether you like each other first. And if you do, I mean, that's the perfect analogy of what happens in football transfer windows. If you see a girl or boy that you like, do you knock on their door and say, hey, Mr. Father of girl or boy that I like, can I marry your daughter? Yes, you can. And their daughter goes, I don't want to marry him. Well, you're not. There you go. You actually get into a relationship with that person first, find out you like each other, and then you ask for the permission if you want to. Um, I've been reading a few articles in the last couple of days. Not great sources, though. Kunde is desperate to come to Old Trafford, anything there. Thank you, Shavin, for that update, actually, because that's a really that's a really good thing. I saw that over the weekend and completely forgot about Kunde. Um, look, Verandil could fall through. Verandil could fall through because he stays at Real Madrid. And if he stays at Real Madrid then United have got to find an alternative. Maybe maybe Kunde is the alternative, but at the moment, it's Varane. That's what we're looking at. That's the first choice. That's what United need to deliver. Uh, when do you think Sancho will do his medical, says Ezebel? I don't know. I don't know. I wish I did, but I don't know. Um, and wasn't Donny van der Beek supposed to be the Pogba replacement, says Sachin? Well, he still could be. Still could be. Um, going forward, I want to see more action being sent down on clubs for being fans behaving like they do it. This means stopping people attending games, point deduction, then so be it. You should all be ashamed. What's that got to do with Manchester United, Gaz? You, you, you're bringing England issues to Manchester United. We're, we've got a massive fan base, most of which will not be... Um, England fans. So why should Manchester United be targeted in relation to that? The reality is, I think some of the some of the behaviour in London yesterday was a, was deplorable. Um, fans forcing their way into the ground, disgusting. But you know, it's mob mentality. Mark, I'm very scared for Sancho if he will succeed, says Jay Ling's fan. Mate, I tell you, I'm telling you now, clip it, take it to the bank, do whatever you want with it. If you know what Jaden Sancho is all about, look at the Ukraine game. That's the player we're getting. This is a teenager. Was he, what, 17, 16, who at that age in Manchester Manchester City's academy said to Pep Guardiola in so many words, are you going to play me? I don't trust you're going to play me. I'm leaving. Goes to Dortmund, plays first team football every season, Champions League football every season, and is one of the best players in the Bundesliga as a teenager in a country that he's not from. People are thinking because he missed a penalty when he'd literally been on the pitch a few seconds and one of the first touches of the ball is trying to score a penalty in a Euros final. 
totally rusty, totally thrown in at the deep end, miss, takes a bad penalty and misses. And people think that this kid is going to suddenly lose his mentality and lose his ability. I think it will galvanise him. I think if you know anything about Jaden Sancho, this will, he won't be sat, he'll be disappointed. Of course he will. But he'll use that like any professional sportsman does. And it will be a motivator. I think it benefits United. It doesn't benefit Jaden because he'll be feeling like shit. But we will benefit because he will come to United determined. He would have come to United determined anyway. I think, look at what happened with Beckham in 98. Look at what happened with Ronaldo in 2006. They will come back and they will be motivated with a point to prove and hungry. We will. I think this will work better for us now. Uh, don't want Pogba to leave, but if he does, Oli must replace him with Van der Beek at 24. He will have the world at his feet. I hope you're right. Apparently, Italy could be disqualified because UEFA has seen that one of their players in the quarterfinal and semi got a yellow card. So if I don't know if it's true, says Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, stop trolling people. There's uh, absolutely no chance of that happening. You lose, you lose. And uh, to be honest with you, I wouldn't even want to. Um, I wouldn't even want to change it. You know, the reality is, you, you, you play the game, you lose the game. I'd, I'd never want that to happen to, to me or, or Manchester United, and I wouldn't want to happen, it to happen now. You've lost. We move on. Um, Havertz is better than Sancho. Bring it on. I mean, like, welcome welcome to the United stands, these rival fans of rival clubs, because you've got shit channels. You're very welcome. Did Phillips play well yesterday? I think he did, says Nathan Allen. Well, yeah, I think he did okay. I mean, Phillips would be better than anything United have got. I've said that many times before, but... Um, I don't know that uh, he's a player that I would want us to bring to Manchester United. Um, I'd take him over. I'd take him over Harry Winks definitely, and I'd take him over Scott McTominay. But um, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't know whether I'd want him at Manchester United um, over. I certainly wouldn't take him over a Declan Rice. How come Harry flourished in Euros along with non-athletic centre back? Can Kammer be next Rodrigo Possibon? Says Pratic. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think Harry Maguire did well in the world, in the Euros because um, Stones is better than Lindelof. Simple as that. I think Stones is better than Lindelof. John Stones is actually very good in the air. We like to take the piss out of John Stones because he plays for Man City, but he's just won the Premier League. He's, ke he's kept Laporte on the bench all season. And whilst I don't think John Stones is as good as Harry Maguire, and I'll have a few fans from Man City and other clubs will be saying you're having a joke, aren't you? I think John Stones is very good in the air. He's physical and he's quick. He's a better, he's better than Lindelof. And therefore, Harry, it's not rocket science to me, and, and, and a lot of United fans would agree with me on this. We keep saying, buy a top-class centre-back and Harry Maguire will be a better United player. If you've not just seen the evidence of that for the Euros, then you're blind. John Stones is way better than Lindelof and Stones with Maguire makes Maguire better because he hasn't got to compensate for Lindelof. Maguire can do his job. That's why Maguire was very good in the Euros because he had a very good centre-back next to him. And in Varane, he'll have an even better centre-back next to him. So Maguire can be even better. I think Harry Maguire can be a top five centre-back in the world. People are going to laugh. But I think he can be if we get Varane in because the, 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 the platform would be perfect for him. There's no excuses for him not to just go and focus on his game. I know people think Sancho might not take off uh, running right away, but I've got a good feeling he's going to tear it up this season. I hope you're right, AJ. I hope you're right. I'm not going to put the pressure on that he'll tear it up straight away, but I do think he'll be good. Uh, Scott Andrews says, assuming we get Varane, do you think Lindelof will stay or want to leave? Says Scott. I still think Lindelof will get plenty of game time, Scott. You know, there'll be injuries, there'll be rotation. And Gaz Hardy said, Mark did good because he's a world-class player. Mark's never said any less of his partnership that don't work, says Gaz Hardy. And um, I think Phillips do well with Bruno and Pogba, their leaders who will make anyone better like Bruno did with all the team when he got the club, my opinion, says Nathan Allen. I mean, I think it's an interesting point there. Um, how many of you would actually take um, Kelvin Phillips at Manchester United? Because to be honest with you, a lot of people think I didn't like Phillips in the England team. It wasn't that I didn't like him. I just thought Rice and Phillips lacked creativity. It was a bit too defensive. It was a bit too McFred. But if you had Phillips in our midfield and then you have, you played him with Pogba and Bruno or Van der Beek and Bruno, I think it would work well. I would take Phillips over Fred and McTominay any day of the week. I'd take him over Harry Winks. Um, I would think he's... I probably I, It's an interesting debate whether you'd want Calvin Phillips or Basuma because Calvin Phillips is more of a holding midfielder than Basuma is. I would love Calvin Phillips to come to Manchester United. I'd prefer Rice by a long way. 
But I would take Kelvin Phillips at Manchester United because we wouldn't ask him to do the job he did for England, which is basically play like McFred, two holding midfielders just running around a bit. Get him to do that job on his own. He can pass the ball. He's tenacious. He can be disciplined. I would take Phillips at Manchester United. I don't know whether it's a consideration. I don't know what Leeds would sell him for, but I would take him. I don't know whether he'd want to come to United, but I would take him. I think he. I think he'd be a good CDM, and I think he could play CDM on his own. So I would take him. Um, and obviously, he's, he's a disciple of Bielsa, so he's going to know how to play football. Um, so yeah, I would take him definitely. But I don't think it's. I think it's a fan theory. It's a bit like Fabinho. We used to talk about Fabinho on this channel for about two years before he went to Liverpool. He was well loved on this channel, but Man United never really went in for him. And look at what he did. He went to Liverpool and he became one of the best CDMs in the world. So, you know, but I think Calvin Phillips is a fan theory. It's not a Man United theory. My opinions are so good, but he'd be good, says Nathan Allen. Uh, Fred is not better than Phillips. No, I don't think he is. Uh, certainly not as a centre defensive midfielder. I'd love Fred to be a CDM. I just don't think he's a CDM, the same as uh, as uh, McTominay. They're just not CDMs on their own right. Um, Sam Brock says he was box to box before Bielsa made him into a holding midfielder. Uh, Chu Chuamini says Marcio, good player, but I don't really know loads about him. And Chelsea were looking at him, so he could be a player that we look at. Um, Right. Well, there we go. Nice bit of a Q&A there. As I said, apologies for not getting Romano on. Hopefully we'll do that tomorrow. But we did get a really big update on Romano from Romano. Personal terms are not a problem. Anything you're hearing today about personal terms being a problem is not true. And um, we're basically waiting on Real Madrid to accept that Varane wants to leave. They're still trying to get him to stay. But Romano says that's going to be very difficult for them. The PSG thing, I don't even know what that's all about. Phillips is a good passer. He shows signs being able to hold his own, but I think his price would have gone past the point of being good business. And I think that would be true, Gaz. I think it would be a problem. We're back at eight o'clock. Tune in at eight o'clock. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm loving that back background. It was just We just tried it. I think it's quite good. We might do it again. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Make sure you smash our like on video. Subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. I'll see you at eight o'clock. Thanks for watching.